Hi everyone, we are from Group 5 presenting for our course BPMN 2023 Organizational Behavior Group F, Session A232 for a case study on Jack Welch for our lecturer Dr. Usama Sola. These are the names and matrix numbers of our group members. Hello, my name is Kausalia and my metric number is 2975599. Now, I'm going to discuss about historical context, both the leader and organization in this case study. Jack Welch, a chemical engineer, joined GE in 1960 and rose through the ranks to become CEO in 1991. Proven as neutron jet for its focus on efficiency in incremental performance reviews and expected GE to focus on high performing businesses. Under his leadership, GE grew significantly and became a world class company. His leadership style and methods are still debated today. General Electric has a long history of innovation. Founded in 1892, GE started with electric power and lighting. Early in 20th century, short then branch out into appliances, healthcare, transportation. GE became a multinational corporation under Brad Codiner in the 1950s. Jack worked like major growth and diversification in the 1980s and 1990s. GE faced challenges in the 2000s and rich structures. Today, GE focuses on aviation, power, and renewable energy using digital tech for the future. General H. John, CEO of General Electric from 1972 1981, has also made a major growth in the GE into new areas like finance, aeroscope, and media. He also emphasized research and development leading to breakthroughs in renewable energy and medical network took over General Electric during a tough time that economy lost competition and some businesses in General Electric weren't doing well. He needed to make big chances to turn things around. Jack Welch turned GE around with a five-step plan. First, clean up. He got rid of businesses that weren't profitable, which is fix, sell, or close. Second, constantly improve. He pushed everyone to find ways to be more efficient and productive. Third one, simplify. He cut out unnecessary bureaucracy and made things run smoother. And fourth one, be innovative. He encouraged em employees to come up with new ideas, break risks, that. And the fifth one will be like the last one. Focus on winning. These changes help GE grow and become a top company. Jack Wells' bold leadership and focus on innovation helped General Electric succeed in 1981. However, opinions on him are mixed. Some criticize his emphasis on quick profit, cost cutting, which we believe harm workers and the company in the long term. Others praise him for revolutionizing corporate management. Hello everyone, my name is Tan Xuanzia and my major number is 297636. Today in our presentation 3, what is Welsh objective in the series of initiatives which launched in the late 1980s and early 1990s? Evaluate the intended outcomes of the changes and identify the underlying logics or rationals driving the transformation process. Welsh objective is to transform GE into the most profitable, higher level supply companies globally, which is for the light against a world class competitor. Welsh aims to create a dynamic, flexible, and entrepreneurial culture at GE that not only accepts the chance but succeeds on it. Intended outcome, profitability, and competitiveness. By setting a standard that each business unit must be the industry first or second competitor of a existing market, he also aims to streamline GE focus and resources, ensuring profitability and competitiveness. Second, elimination of bureaucracy. Through the rollout initiative, we are intended to cut down bureaucracy, making the companies more agile and responsive to changes. The third one is the efficiency and innovation. By adopting best practice from other successful companies, we are start to enhance GE operational efficiency, customer satisfaction, and innovative capability. The next is the employee engagement, encouraging participation at all levels was intended to both employees, morale, and engagement fostering a culture of commitment and innovation. Innovation G become more profitable and competitive, relating to real strategy focus on industry leadership for its business unit. Moreover, the World Out Initiative effectively reduces bureaucracy, allowing for faster decision making and problem solving. Besides, learning from best practice in GE operations and innovations, keeping the company at the forefront of various industries. 
Next, the increased engagement and smooth rounds among employees demonstrate the success of Wells participatory approach, contributing to a more vibrant and entrepreneurial built company culture. Underlying logic or rational anticipating problems. We all believe that proactively addressing issues will keep bringing a hit of its competitors. This PMD's approach was meant to ensure the company long term succeed and resilience in a competitive market. Second, encouraging participation by involving employees in the decision making process and problem solving, which aim to tap into the collective intelligence and creativity of the world's force, driving innovations and commitment. The last one is the loving chance. Wells' philosophy that embracing chance was crucial for continuous improvement, improvement and adaptability refresh his understanding that in a rapidly evolving market, failing status was now an option. Chen was seen as a core value essential for the company's survival and growth. That's all for me. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Yang Zixing and my ranking number is 297882. Today, I'm going to discuss the four questions. How does such a large complete device consortium divide the critics and continue to grow so profitably? Have we our various initiatives added value? If so, how? In my opinion, GE continue to grow so profitably because of four initiatives. Firstly, aggressive restructuring. Second, increase employee productivity and reduce various credit. Thirdly, Six Sigma Quality Initiative. Last but not least, Digital Transformation. The first initiative is aggressive restructuring. We are selling off more than 200G business and made acquisition of over 370 high potential business. In addition, we have reduced the number of hierarchical level from 9 to 4 to improve the communication from CEO to business in GE. Furthermore, we have strategy reduced GE depend on traditional industry product by expanding business nature into service. And the value added in 1995, nearly 60% of GE profit come from service, compared to 16.4% in 1980. The revenue increased from 27.2 million to 29.2 million, while the operating profit increased from 1.6 million to 2.4 billion. GE enabled provide impressive 23% per annual return to its shareholder. The second initiative increased employee productivity and reduced viewer credit. We have come up with an innovative idea, work up a forum for employees to speak out their voice, mind idea about company, promote the idea of boundary less company, where an open anti parochial environment friendly in selling new ideas in company. Furthermore, we have underperforming business unit and staff, reducing their workforce to make GE leaner and more agile. And the value added GE success reduced employee from 404,000 in 1980 to 292,000 in 1989. Furthermore, workout result in increased productivity of GE. Average annual return doubled up from 2% to 4% in 1988 and 1992. Early Six Sigma Quality Initiative. We have introduced Six Sigma Quality Initiative with the purpose to improve quality and efficiency of GE. Certain methodology of Six Sigma Quality Initiative lead to significant improvement in product quality and operational efficiency across GE diverse business units. By Six Sigma Quality Initiative, GE significantly reduced error and increased efficiency. GE report a return of 750 million from the initial 500 million investment and expect an additional return of 1.5 million in 1999. Furthermore, 5,000 managers have been fully trained in Six Sigma methodologies and tools, earning the title of Bad Bells and Master Bad Bells. Last but not least, digital transformation. We have recognized the potential of the internet as a transformative force. We launched an e-business initiative called DestroyYourBusiness.com to integrate digital capability into GE operation, ensuring the company could leverage new technology to maintain its competitive edge. And the result, the DestroyYourBusiness.com initiative enabled GE to leverage digital technology to streamline operations, improve customer integration, and explore new business models. This forward thinking strategy helped GE stay competitive in the rapid evolved digital landscape, maintain GE market leadership in the digital age. Hi, uh, my name is Jong Sun Ho, and my matrix number is 297536. Uh, and I'm going to discuss about what is my relation of wealth approach to leading change. 
and how important is he to his success and what implication for his replacement. Uh, first of all, in my opinion, uh, Welch is a visionary as well as a decisive, persistent, and adaptable leader. When Jack Welch became CEO in April 1981, during US economy initiation, he tried to leverage performance in GE diverse portfolio of business, challenged himself to let GE be better than the best and radically restructure the company over the next five years by setting the standard for each business to become the top one or two competitor in its industry. First, he implemented cost cutting and restructuring by selling off more than 200 uncompetitive business. He only focused on area where GE could be the market leader by acquiring company that fit his strategy vision. He also reduced the workforce because he only wants the staff who are more effective and competitive and don't need the staff that will slow down the process. Other than that, he knows that it cannot sustain high productivity without cultural change. He promotes open communication, innovation and continuous learning within the organization by launching two closely linked initiatives. That is a dark workout and the best practice to create a forum in which employees and their bosses could work out new way of dealing with each other and their business might be run more effectively. So now let's discuss how Jack Welch was important to GE's success during his tenure as a CEO. So first, he succeeded to transform GE into a, one of the most valuable companies in the world. He created a culture of innovations, accountability, and continuous improvement at GE, and he always promote open communication within the organization and encourage employees to drive change and innovation. So employees may feel value and motivate uh, to give idea and show their effort towards achieving the company goals. Next, under Welch leadership, GE financial performance was exceptional. Uh, he brings consistent revenue growth in the company and shareholder returns. Welch focused on operational efficiency, cost management, and strategy investment to generate strong financial results and enhance GE financial performance. So, next we're gonna discuss about what implications for his replacement. For sure, the implications were significant because you can see how. Jack Welch maintaining the performance standard and performance improvement during his tenure and shareholders and employees may have high expectations for the replacement on whether the new CEO can bring them better performance or not in the future. In addition, we know that each leader has their own leadership style and visions so the new CEO may keep the positive element of what Welch brought to GE and use his or her innovative and more effective leadership style to help the company achieve better performance in the future. That's all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Thompson Liu and my matrix number is 297782. I will be in charge of question 6, which is to trace and discuss the progress of the organization from the time the leader departed to the present day. I will be breaking down the question into events. First, following Jack Welch's retirement from General Electric or GE in 2001, he received a record-breaking severance payment of $417 million. This included undisclosed retirement benefits later valued at $2.5 million annually, covering unrestricted usage of a corporate jet and a luxurious New York City residence. These details emerged from a settlement GE reached with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC in 2004. GE has faced multiple SEC allegations over the years. In 2009, the company paid a $50 million penalty to settle accusations of using improper accounting methods to artificially boost reported earnings and avoid negative financial results in 2002 and 2003. Again in 2020, GE settled for $200 million over claims that it misled investors about the profitability of its long-term healthcare and power units during 2016 and 2017. Following up, the 2008 financial crisis triggered by overleveraged investments in U.S. real estate and risky subprime loans drastically reduced the value of GE Capital's investments, causing GE's share price to plummet over 80% from late 2007 to early 2009. GE overstretched since Jack Balch's departure, which saw Warren Buffett step in with a $3 billion preferred investment to stabilize operations. 
Under CEO Jeff Immelt, GE reduced GE capital size, refocusing on manufacturing, and sold off NBC Universal, GE Plastics, GE Water, and GE Appliances. In 2009, GE slashed its dividend from $1.24 to $0.82 per share, with further cuts in 2010. Immelt, who led GE for 16 years, stepped down in 2017 and later chaired FNL. Next, in January 2017, GE announced 12,000 job cuts, causing its stock to fall 45% that year. In November, GE unveiled a broad restructuring, halving its quarterly dividend from $0.24 to $0.12 cents a share. And by December 2018, the dividend was cut to just $0.01 cent per share. Late 2017 saw GE lay off thousands across all divisions. On October 1, 2018, H. Lawrence Kulp replaced John Flannery as CEO. Kulp aggressively reduced GE's debt and divested unwanted stakes, including GE's stake in Baker Hughes and the transportation unit which merged with Wattpack. These actions raised significant capital, boosting the share price by 53% in 2019. Finally, by 2020, GE shifted away from the conglomerate model to three core business areas energy solutions, jet engines, and healthcare technologies. In 2021, GE announced plans to divide into three separate entities, completing the split in April 2024. The split resulted in 1. GE Vernova, or GEV, focusing on power regeneration, renewable energy, and digital products for the energy sector, manufacturing wind, gas, and steam turbines, energy storage, and grid technologies. Second, GE Healthcare, or GHC, producing medical imaging, monitoring, and diagnostic equipment along with related services. Third, GE Aerospace, providing jet engines and related services to major aircraft manufacturers like Boeing and Airbus, continuing to design, manufacture, and service commercial and military aircraft engines as a standalone company. These are the references used in producing this case study. That is all from us. Thank you.